our plunge pool's really starting to take shape. Last week, we cleaned off the rust and paint from the metal overhead frame and gave it a new modern look. I love the colour and I'm even happier about how smoothly it's going on. The exterior block work also received some much needed TLC with a scrub and a fresh lick of paint. But the biggest transformation was the new seating setup within the pool. However, it wasn't without its difficulties. It's definitely a bit frustrating, this process. It's amateur hour on the farm this week as we attempt to render for the very first time. What could possibly go wrong? It might end up cocking the whole thing up. But before that, we have a mistake to fix from last week. So we're back on trying to press forward with the fencing today. And the first thing we are doing is assessing Quite honestly, the shoddy job that I did the other day. I had a few hours spare last week and I came down and started doing some, but yeah, I'm not happy with the results. They are really, really wonky. You just kept hitting so much stone yeah. and rock, so it just threw the line off completely. The ones where I'm actually drilling the hole and then putting it in and tamping it back in and filling it back in, they're all good. They are plumb. It's the ones where I'm just going straight in with the post hammer. The ground is getting so tough. My hands were battered at the end of it. They still haven't fully recovered and it just took much longer than it needs to. So today we're gonna take a different approach. Finally! Oh, that was exhausted. Oh, that was much easier. Should have done that all along. This wind today is ridiculous. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm gonna lose it. God, that's really tight. I feel like we're in a bonnet. <laughs> I know there's probably some of you out there thinking, why on earth are you removing those posts you've already put in? Well, first of all, there's only three of them, so it's really didn't take us very long. And also they were so, so wonky that I know we will not be happy with it. We've still got the rest of the fencing to do, so we'll get all the rest of the fencing nice and plumb. If we leave those three in, they're just gonna be an anomaly. Easier just to take them out now and redo it. And also, I don't like using the post hammer. It's a lot of effort, it's exhausting. You can only do so many in a day. And also you can see like here, it damages the top of the post. Well, you know, we've paid good money for these and I want them to last. So do not want these posts getting damaged. I think the biggest problem with it is you just have next to no control. You're literally just kind of roughly getting something straight. You can check the level and then you're just getting this big thing and smashing it down. We're putting these into the ground 60, 70 centimeters. That's quite a long way to go just by using force. Maybe there's another technique and I'm just doing it wrong, but whenever I've seen anybody using it, they're doing it the same way I am. So I don't really think that's the issue, but we have the auger machine and I think we're just going to try and put that to use you know drill some holes get the posts in roughly level them up backfill it job done I know from doing the other post that is much quicker than using that post hammer on this hard ground that seems so much easier much easier than the post hammer, although I've definitely just hit a stone or something, so I'm just trying to figure out what it is. So that entire hole was completely full of rock, so we had to resort to getting the trusty jackhammer out, but I think we've just about got the correct depth. Ooh, just. Nice, right, on to the next one. Hopefully this one will be a bit easier going. Are you gonna give us a hand, little hole digger? Now I ain't saying she a hole digger. <laughs> <laughs> Such a retro, <laughs> retro reference. I don't know why I'm surprised, but the next hole, we hit even more stone, even shallower. So we broke up as much as we could, but after a while, just had to decide that that hole's gonna be 20 centimeters shorter than it needs to be. And we're just gonna take 20 centimeters off the top of that post. All these posts are doing, they're not taking any of the tension. They're literally just holding the fence in place and keeping the line. So it's really not the end of the world. And then yeah, after that, we've whisked through and done another, what, eight or so holes no problem at all pretty much smooth sailing however with that post digger that we're using we're using a thinner 
drill bit. We were before using a big fat one. Obviously it was taking out a lot more earth than we needed to. So we've dropped it down to a thinner one and I think that's a better choice. The only negative to it is that it doesn't get all of the soil out. So I'm having to go around afterwards and squeeze my hand down this hole just to pull out the last bit of soil. But I definitely feel a bit like I'm shoulder deep in a cow right now. It's a strange sensation. <laughs> Takes a very confident man to use that drill, Ricky. <laughs> I'm proud of my nubbin. <laughs> <laughs> I lost the, the bit that goes in to extend that you then put the drill bit in. So at the moment, I'm going to squeeze this tiny little thing <laughs> <laughs> into the end, but it still works. Does the job. Yeah. Well, that was infinitely easier than the way I did the last lot using the post hammer. Would you agree? Absolutely. So much more controlled, so much more accurate. Just a much better job. Yeah, couldn't agree more. I think as well, once we got into the rhythm of it, we started going actually pretty quickly. Yeah. So I think if we adopt this method to do the rest of the property, like, I don't want to use the post hammer again. That was so much better. We can actually yeah. get everything plumb and the difference now of the way you saw those other ones with the string line and they're just literally <laughs> bending all over the place. This is like pretty bob on. I'm impressed with it, it's good. Yeah, me too. So today we are going to be, well, attempting to do the rendering or at least the first coat of the rendering, the scratch coat within the tank on the bench. Yesterday, I went to about five different shops in the city, trying to look for some tools and buying sand and cement, and all the things we need for it. And I could not get in any of those shops, three tools that I really wanted to buy. And that is a plastering hawk, a plastering scarifier to scratch through it. And the last one was I wanted some type of edging tool because on the edge of the bench, we want that to be rounded off just so it's a bit easier going on the back of the legs. So because I couldn't get any of them, we are taking it upon ourselves today to go DIY and attempt to muddle together with the, with the scraps that we've got around the house and build a few of these tools. Hopefully it's gonna pan out okay. three tools made whether they work or not we'll find out together later on I guess oh okay so it's late in the afternoon it's cooled down a bit now it's been a hot one today so we've been trying to stay out of it the objective for this afternoon is to try and get the first coat of render onto this bench but before we can do that there's blocks on the top and these blocks in a few of them are really weak and they've got holes in and even now we just sit on it and it starts to crumble so we're gonna kind of make a bit more of an opening in them fill them with some concrete and some rubble and then we'll start rendering A 
Okay, so Victoria's just finishing off the last one of those. It's a bit tricky on some of the blocks. They have a tiny little hole going across the middle and it's so you can split the block in half, but oh, they are awkward to stuff and fill, but we're nearly there. So while Victoria's finishing that off, I'm gonna jump back up on the mixer and I'm gonna start mixing up a render mix. So while the render's mixing, I just wanted to show you this sand we're using because we're using plastering sand. This stuff is so nice. I feel like it's been robbed from like a Caribbean island or something. We should maybe buy a load of this and smear an area of the land in it and we can have a little staycation. Smear? Okay, spread, is that okay. better? So we're using this plastering sand. In this first coat, we're doing four parts of this sand, one part cement, and then we're using some of this which is like a waterproof, waterproofing additive, I think they call it. Waterproofing in powder form. So we're gonna use that on the scratch coat and then we'll do a slightly different mix when we're doing the top coat tomorrow. The texture of this stuff is so strange. Different to anything I think I've ever felt before. I don't know whether to load up, render or chop onions with this sink. If you'd have been here a couple of hours ago, you'd have seen me chasing after our shade net, which completely detached from the clamps that was holding it on. And yeah, needed a bit of a reworking. So with the render mix, we are going for a toothpaste-like consistency. The only difficulty with knowing if you've got that is that, I don't know about you, but my toothpaste doesn't have sand in it. We think we're about there. It's very putty-like. But yeah, absolute amateurs, so we're doing our best. 10 minutes in, yeah. initial thoughts. Hire a professional next time. No! <laughs> <laughs> nah, uh, to be honest, I don't think I've got the patience for this. And as you can see with these blocks, well, we put them the wrong way around. It's not a flat surface. Sorry, I've got suntan lotion in my eye. And yeah, it's not the easiest situation for a beginner renderer to start with, but Try my best, getting there, probably done nearly, I don't know, what's that, about a third? Yeah. It's going on, we'll see how we go. Little way to go, yeah. Right, Victoria's turned her hand to rendering whilst I've been making another mix because, as you can see, Oh, you can't really see here, but we are racing against the clock. The sun is just about to disappear behind those trees. So we are desperately trying to push on and get this done. But Victoria's doing a good job. She's on the top whilst I've done the front and we are about two thirds of the way, but there's still quite a bit to do with like scratching it, actually floating it and all the rest. How are you finding it? Not bad. Yeah. That's a lie. No, <laughs> it's not bad. It's just really hard to know when it's actually enough. It's like that one final pass and it actually just lifts up. So it's getting to know the material and when to know enough is enough. Well, it got far too dark last night for me to continue. So I kind of had to just stop where I was and just get it to a point where I could carry on today. What I actually wanted to do was get it fairly level. So the top coat would just be like really easy to put on, but it needs more time to like dry off a little bit. It was just too wet, I couldn't really do anything. So I just ended up leaving it as it was, except I got our little comb scarifier tool that we made yesterday and scratched that through to make a, you know, indentations in it. So something else could be applied. But yes, yeah, ended up okay, I think. I'm actually quite happy with it. I think it looks really nice. It's quite smooth. The edge obviously was quite difficult to do, but yeah, overall, Impressive. What do you think we do about the front edge where the legs are going to be? Do we do another coat or are we just literally just doing a top coat and it's just going to be uneven? I think we just do a top coat. I think it's going to be a little bit uneven, but it's going to be smooth, which is the main thing. Yep, I'm in agreement. Yeah. To be honest, I just want to move forward. Okay, so while that's mixing, just to say, 
This mix, a bit different from the one I did yesterday. So the scratch coat yesterday, that was four parts sand, one part cement, and then also we had some waterproofer in. This one, which is gonna be the top coat, this is gonna be five parts sand and one part cement. So you always wanna make the next coat weaker than the one that came before it. And that's because when there's movement in the first coat, which inevitably there will be when things move, particularly in the tank where it's got the pressure of the water on it, when that moves, the top coat is weaker and the top coat can take that movement. If we don't do that, if the top coat was the same strength, or stronger than that scratch coat behind it, then that means that front coat would end up cracking basically because it's got no flexibility to move. I'm speaking to you here like I've got some sort of authority. I don't, this is the first time I've ever done this. I'm just passing on the information from you that I have read on the internet. So, so far, so good. I'm about three quarters of the way through. This top coat is going on so much smoother than yesterday. I think learning from the mix I did yesterday, definitely I need to make the mix a bit wetter because I did that today and it's just so nice and smooth and sticks much easier and it's much less work to push it in. One thing I did want to show you because this is my first time doing it, so I'm learning as I go. And if anybody else out there has never done rendering before, but you're thinking about it. So there's a couple of different techniques. So when you have the plaster on your hawk, what they quite often say is, you know, you hold it up to there and then you push it off and then scrape it up. And I've been doing that thinking, well, that makes sense. You know, you catch all the excess that falls onto the, the hawk. Actually, I found it's way more difficult doing that. The thing I find easiest, so on this backside, you're gonna scrape up with your backhand, scrape some off the hawk, like that, then use that and just push it straight up that way. And I just find it so much more controlled. You can get kind of the same amount every time. You get much more of a feel for it. Yeah, that's a little tip. I'd say if you're gonna do rendering, try that technique first rather than straight off. Also, I just wanna say the star of the show on this job is this DIY hawk, the chopping board hawk. I, I'm amazed at how well this has worked. I don't know how I would have done it without it. So I'm very pleased with this little thing. Okay, so that's that top coat on. So what I need to do now is to let it go off a little bit and I'll probably go and have some lunch and hopefully that'll be about enough time. I'll come back to it. And then at that point, we can then start screeding it, floating it, trying to get it level. One thing that I'm very concerned about where I feel like I'm trying to run before I can walk with this project is we want to get a nice curve on the edge. But in order to do that, you have to kind of stack the render up on the corner. Ordinarily, you would use an edging trout and then you scrape it along to get the nice curve. Well, obviously we couldn't have an actual edging trout and we're gonna use, you know, this makeshift thing that we've made. So you can see the profile we're gonna try and get, but I feel like this is gonna be very difficult and it might end up cocking the whole thing up. So we'll see. Okay guys, so I'm just heading back from lunch. I think whilst it's still a bit wetter, I'm gonna try and do this curved edge. God, I'm feeling nervous. Let's see if it'll work. Oh. Kind of, it's kind of working. Let me keep going. Oh, this bit's really built up. It's actually not bad, you know. I think I've just put too, too much on at this point. Okay, but I'm actually fairly confident that's gonna do the trick. So I've just gone through with the spirit level and I've roughly scraped off and ruled off the top and the front just to get it as level as I can, but I'm not going overboard with this. It looks pretty good as it is. And I feel like the more I mess around with it, the more likely it is something's going to mess up. So now I'm gonna give it a little bit of a spray down. I'm gonna get the float and I'm gonna start trying to even it all out and try and get that nice finish. And then finally, I'll get a wet sponge and finish it off. Slight change of plan. So the render isn't quite dry yet. I tried to float it, but the render needs to be a certain consistency for that to work. And it's still a bit too wet at the moment. It's dragging the mortar around in a way that I don't want it to. So 
I'm kind of keeping an eye on it, but just letting it dry out a bit more before I go back on. In the meantime, we've got a bit of this white paint left over. So as you can see, like we kind of put it on quite thin last time. So I'm just doing a bit of a second coat because we've got maybe a third of the pot left. The more we've looked at it, we think white is a bit too glaring. We really wanted like an off-white or like kind of a limey, like almost beigey color, but we just couldn't find anything. So we decided to go with a different color. We're just gonna use this white as like a primer undercoat to make the color more level. And we will probably paint this tomorrow night if we've got time and hopefully it'll make it into this video. But can you guess what color we're gonna paint it? It's nothing extreme. You'll probably guess pretty quickly. There's not that many options. <laughs> Okay, so it is dry enough now to float. So again, first time I've ever done this. This is definitely an unnecessary step for this bench in this tank. Realistically, this doesn't need to be dead straight and absolutely plumb and level, but I've never rendered before. We might end up doing rendering on one of the buildings. So this just seemed like a good opportunity to do all of the different steps, learn what to do more of next time, what to do less of. So with the floating process, it shows you where the high spots are and where the lower spots are. So the higher spots you'll see, they'll be darker because you've been working it with the float. Whereas the lighter parts are the areas where there's kind of a dip in the level. So what they do when they do walls is that you then now take a bit of render, you fill it in, you work the float. Yeah, let's keep going. I've opened the can of worms now, so let's just keep going and get it done. is the bench floated final step sponging it down to get that nice texture and that'll be it job done there we have it all done so i'm intrigued to see what it's going to be like tomorrow when it's dried out yeah overall i'm pretty happy with it santa's little helper here <laughs> finishing off the painting dog's going crazy down here flying away standard yeah. evening on the farm yeah. ricky you've done such a good job on that we've done a good job you did it as well yeah but percentage wise that is your project your baby so if it cracks when the water goes in your <laughs> fault <laughs> No, it looks great and honestly for a first attempt it I don't think you could have hoped for anything better. I didn't anyway. Yeah, I have to say I would agree. For a first attempt, it was challenging, it was way more labor intensive than I thought it was going to be, but very happy with the end result and the boss is happy, so that's all that matters. Happy wife, happy life. So it's been 24 hours since I finished off rendering the bench. So we're heading back down to check on it. And also we've got our new paint color here. This thing needs toning down because it is far too bright. So we had limited choices of color at the shop. We have gone with a gray, but the only difficulty is the paint cans were theoretically showing the same colour, but all the shades on the sticker on the front were different. So this is a bit of a mystery. What do you reckon? Hard to say, it's really split. I need to give it a good mix. Ooh, nice. It's not so dissimilar to the render colour as it is right now. I think this is gonna be a lot more appropriate for the tank. Oh, I'm so squished. This is not an ideal work site. I cannot wait for this to be finished. Not far to go. Nice, like, <laughs> warm evening, sitting in there with a cold beer. A pina colada. <laughs> <laughs> when have you ever had a pina colada? I don't 
think I've ever had a pina colada. <laughs> I've never had a tank to enjoy one in. If you like pina coladas <laughs> and having a soak in your tank. <laughs> I wondered where you were going with that. <laughs> So we are back. Oh, my hat's going to blow off. We are back. Oh. <laughs> In a tornado. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just look like you're trying to hold on to some sort of fucking bronco or something. <laughs>